disciples said, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless unto the coming of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, this is not a one day thing. He expects us to be holy every day. Jesus put it like this, be holy for I am holy. The whole man was redeemed on the cross and sanctified through Jesus Christ to be holy. He died that we may be holy. He died that we could have life everlasting. This was the life of the Apostle Paul. He was a living sacrifice. God don't want nothing dead. He want alive souls. He said, let the dead bury the dead. Yeah. And I know, I know, I don't hunch nobody, but every now and then you, you got some dead folks right in church. Won't even sing, won't even say praise God. But it's so dignified. And think you got it all made. But you don't have it made yet. Paul was a servant of Jesus Christ. And in battle he was a warrior. I'm telling you, we as Christians must be a warrior. On the battlefield fighting for the Lord. In uh, the book of Ephesians 6 and 10, he tells them to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on. Sometime I wonder, I wonder, do we pull it off too soon? There's a war going on, my brothers and sisters, and the flesh every day does not slack up from warring against the spirit the flesh is pulling you one way trying to separate you from the spirit of the Lord we wrestle Paul said not against flesh and blood we we don't have to worry about this flesh and blood but there's principalities there's powers the rules of darkness there's things in high places that seem to work on us that our mind get out of focus, that our speaking get out of contact. And what we hide is in our heart is not the word of God. But he said, I want you to be, don't be conformed to this world. And the only way not to be conformed to this world, you got to be transformed and your mind got to be right. Haven't you seen some people, now we're not going to call them crazy, but they act just like they crazy out of their mind uh, yeah 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 and my brothers and sisters when you're out of your mind you're not in control that's the reason some of you got so many be beatings at home yeah yeah nobody got beaten but me <laughs> but they knew how to keep your mind right yeah. They told you to do something, you would do it. Uh, uh, but that, that, what, that good and acceptable, acceptable, perfect will, God has a perfect will. And he asked us to let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We must prove ourselves as servants of God. I know when we get saved and we, we, we feel like we got it all, but there comes a proven point. And the church will prove what you have and what you don't have. If you got it, you'll show it. And let me use a good, a good out of character word. If you don't got it, somebody else will know you don't got it. The Apostle Paul proved that good and acceptable, perfect will of God through his reasonable service. See, don't brag on because you're doing something. It seems like nobody else is doing it. It's still your reasonable service. 
if you have to work over and over on different jobs in this church, don't complain. That's just your reasonable service. Do it to the glory of God. Don't you hate complainers? Grumblers? Acting like you're the only one? can do it and you've been saying all along let somebody else do it but apostle Paul uh, he did that good acceptable and perfect will of God through his reasonable service believers must prove their work our work our lives that we live need proving if you say you've been born again and I want to see a sign now, now, if you out of business, take your sign down. Take off your robe. Take off your Sunday clothes. And put back on your mini skirt and go ahead. But if you've been born again, you're going to show that I am redeemed. I've been bought with a price. Jesus was the one that have changed my whole life. Uh, my brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, we got to let God change our lives. I want to talk about that perfect will of God. Thessalonians 5 and 21 says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. If you got something good, hold on to it. If you got a good wife, hold on to it. I got a good wife. I'm going to hold on to her. Got a good husband? Hold on to him. Brag on her. You're the best thing that life could give. See, there comes a time you need to brag. That's all we're doing when we're preaching. And I, you've heard me say it so many times. Preaching is nothing but bragging on God. What God can do, has done, and is going to do. Brag on him. If God have done something good for you, brag on him. When the job gives you a raise, you brag on it. Oh, I got a raise. Brag on God that he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous life. In the will of God, he was a prisoner Paul was of Jesus Christ yet he said I'm a prisoner for Jesus Christ otherwise I, I, I'm not in a physical jail what you think I'm in but I'm a prisoner I'm wrapped up and tied up in what I'm doing for the Lord and, and the reason I'm in this you don't know like I know because it happened on a Damascus road when my whole life was changed all the way around he said, for this cause, I'm a prisoner now. I can't get out of this thing. Uh, he was never preferred, uh, uh, referred to himself as a prisoner of Rome. Yet he was in the Roman jail. But he never, uh, never referred himself as being a prisoner in the Roman, or in the Roman jail. Uh, but he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Uh, otherwise, when you become a prisoner, you're under the commandment, the command of whoever is in charge. Uh, I wonder who is in charge of your life. Uh, when you are locked up, you're under the jurisdiction uh, of those who have the power over you. Well, I'm in jail. I'm locked up. I'm, I'm wrapped up and I'm tangled up in, uh, in the power of Jesus Christ. Christ and, and there's some things I want to do but I can't do it because I'm locked up I, I'm, I'm closed off from doing the thing because he's been so good to me and I'm not worrying about breaking out I'm worried about keep breaking in in death he was a war a victorious fighter 2 Timothy 4 and 7 said for I'm not ready to be offered. Now that, that, that's, that's a person that, 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 is a, that is wrapped up and tingled up in Jesus. He said, I'm not ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. And I wonder what will we see when it comes our time and God allows us uh, to be on a bed of affliction, uh, will we glorify God? Uh, or will, I've heard people on their dying uh, 
dead and I've heard them curse uh, and they're going home to be with, uh, with well with the Lord Lord know where they're going uh, and I've seen some fighting uh, but I hope I'll be one that I can just close my eyes and uh, smile a little uh, and roll on into glory land uh, that's the reason I'm living a life my brothers and sisters that I'm not going to be ashamed uh, when death come my way I'm going to look up and say come Lord Jesus because I'm ready to be offered up my time of departure is at hand I've already fought my fights I, I kept my faith I, I kept my faith I, I finished the course and I'm ready I wonder if God has any ready people in here. I'm talking about ready. If the Lord would call you this moment, are you sure you're ready? Do you have to run and try to say, let me get some things ready. Let me go get some oil. Uh, and when you come back, he's already gone. Uh, that happened to the foolish virgin. Uh, uh, they begged for some oil, but they said, not so. Uh, we got our oil. Uh, don't come begging me when you see him coming. Say, Brother Flowers, uh, can I join the church? Uh, Oh, no, go get for yourself. I'm going back with him now. I finished my course. And in finishing my course, uh, I, I kept the faith. I didn't give up. Uh, there were times that I felt like giving up. Uh, anybody ever felt like giving up, but you didn't give up? Uh, it's all right to feel like it. Uh, just don't do it. Uh, oh, yeah, we are tempted, but don't yield to temptation. Uh, the devil going to bring it before you, but you don't have to accept it. All you got to do is hold out, uh, and your change will come. Uh, I don't know about you. A change uh, have come many times uh, in my my life uh, when I thought I couldn't make it uh, and then I begin to think uh, uh, that he said you have already made it that's when I begin to say thank you Lord just for one more day this was the perfect will of God for men uh, determined and for us determined to stand for the Lord we must present Ourself holy before God. We got to know that He's worthy for all the praise that we can give. We can't even praise Him enough. One songwriter said, If I had a thousand tongues, I still couldn't thank Him enough for what is already done. <laughs> we miss out on so many things that have done for us uh, and we can't even think of uh, what is already done. Don't you know it was the hand of mercy that guided you here? Don't you know between here and there things could have happened but he blessed you to see this day as far as it is now and if you're looking to go back home and if we live right and if it's in the will of God we'll go back home ready to lay down and to get up in the morning. That's nothing but the perfect will of God. So, so, so I, bes I beseech, I beg, I beg of you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy unto God. A holy life is a transformed life. You can't be holy unless you've been transformed. The old man must die. And the new man become alive. That old Adam. And, and, and the old Adam, uh, and, uh, let me tell you, he's not buried. He won't rise up again. Because many times when I desire to do good, uh, nobody but me, when I desire to do good, Evil. Evil is a mean old devil. Evil rise. He said, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and if you're not careful, my brothers and sisters, you'll reach back and let him in. And when he get in, you got a time getting him out. Have you ever, well, never, well I better not say that. <laughs> I started to say, I started to say, have you ever put anybody out, let them come back? It's hard to get them out. I ain't talking about nobody but me. 
Amen. But we thank God. We should be, not be conformed to these things because the devil is offering many things now. And I'm telling you, you got to be careful, my brothers and sisters, what you look at, what you touch, and where you go, and who you're meeting, and, and what you're hearing, or listen to what they are saying. Don't you know people will deceive you? Let me put it like this. The devil is out to deceive you, and your closest friend is who? Yourself. That's the reason Jesus said we got to deny self. Self will have you hating somebody that you don't even know. Don't even know their name. And you hate them because their hat look better than yours. Because they got a strut better than yours. And you, what you got to hate me for because God is blessing me? Act like somebody, get transformed, uh, and God will bless you. But uh, no need of trying to put on, uh, put on the righteous clothes uh, and try to act like God wants you to have some righteous clothes on when you come into his house. What you doing in the church uh, with the devil's suit on? Get it off uh, and get the garments of praise, and then we can praise God for his goodness and his mercy. When we have been transformed by the renewing of our mind, we can prove and see you got to prove. Prove yourself. Jesus proved himself. He asked Peter, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Peter said, I know you. I mean, I know it's good to know Jesus. He said, I know you already, already had a little touch. Somebody, somebody in front of you now. I, don't, uh, I realize I don't have it deep enough to know that you and God are the same. Uh, but I already got a touch. Uh, you, are, you are the living God. You're that living God. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, you're the one. Uh, I don't realize it not deeply because I'm going to get mixed up in something, but you're the God that's going to bring me out of darkness. Uh, you're the ones that's going to give me, set me on that hill of that marvelous light. I know who you are. You are Jesus, the son of the living God. And Jesus said flesh and blood didn't reveal this. There's some things uh, you got to realize that flesh and blood is not going to give you nothing uh, to make you happy. Flesh and blood is just only to make you look good. Oh yeah, yeah, and the flesh. Oh yeah, we'll paint up the flesh. We'll make it smell good and on the inside is stinking. But when you get it, uh, that perfume of Jesus Christ on the inside, you can have on raggedy clothes. You can have on dirty clothes. But that sweet spirit is on the inside and it will bring a sweet smelling in the nostrils of God. Titus 2 and 12 says teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly and righteous. Why live in sin and then die in sin. We going through enough. Don't you want to come out? And what we are trying to say, you got to deny the ungodly things. And we know that many things are ungodly. Now you watch what I say. I said it many years ago, 34 years ago. I said as long as they go up to the table in Israel and balling up their fish and you don't see it under the table, there will never be no peace. Let me tell you something, get right Maryland, get right Washington that you live in. Now that they have passed uh, the drugs and all, prostitution going to be an open thing after a while. Oh, oh, y'all hear that? Y'all going to say, I remember that old man saying that. But once one thing starts and the people don't fight against it, then it gets larger. But I come to say that we are to live soberly before God and ungodly uh, and live godly in the sight of God. This world don't offer you nothing but a hard time. 
The devil said to Jesus, bow down and worship me. And I'll give you the cities and the glory that is in them. God said, it is writ. God, you're gonna, God is the only one that you should worship him. And the way you're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, the devil will show you, show you good food. I mean, love good food. You know you're not supposed to eat that cake, Sister Mildred. <laughs> Sister Flowers. But it looks so good. Tastes so good. And we are so tempted till we try. And then we're going to pray to the Lord. <laughs> it's your own fault. It's our own fault. God wants us to be wiser than the world. If something is bad for you, leave it alone. If something is good for you, get all you can of it. He revealed that some would uh, be conformed to things of the world and some would be transformed into the work of Satan. Satan transformed people into doing the things that he wants them to do. He was transformed into a light. Of the world down down below, he, he's a, he's this world light to the sinners who want to uh, follow him. First Corinthians eleven thirteen and fifteen: false prophets, deceitful workers, transform themselves as apostles of Christ. Who work is that? The work of the devil. Have fool preachers, apostles, workers, and have transformed them. Y'all need to hear this. Have transformed them into the work of the devil. And some people eat it up. And it's your own fault because the gospel is so clear. The Bible said that even a child shall not err. So that's why it pays us and behoves us to have an ear to hear and make sure before you hide it in your heart, you understand it clearly. For Satan himself, the Bible said, is transformed into an angel of light. He can make himself, he can illuminate himself to look like somebody you're close to. And you say, oh, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Fall in love overnight. Married last night before you fell in love. Satan tricked you because he looked good, smelled good, and sound good. You had to have him. Now you got him. The Bible said his ministry also being transformed as a ministry, as ministers who end shall be according to their work. You're not going to get away sinning. You're going you're gonna to pay the wages of sin. Going to bring you death. But you don't stop there. You got to follow out that. But the gift of God is eternal life. This is not the perfect, this is the perfect will of God that none should perish. But it's not the per perfect will that others should go the wrong way in serving God. Philippians 3 and 10 said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. We must know him in the power of his resurrection. I can't preach unless I preach his death, burial, and resurrection. We got to know the whole story. We got to know where he died. He died on a hill. Why he died and why he went in the grave and why he rose again. And my Brothers and sisters, when we find out that we are willing to have fellowship with him, we are willing to suffer through some things, we are not worried about being comfortable. You got to be uncomfortable sometimes because this is a rugged trip. This is a crying trip. We suffer. The Bible said that love suffers long. We're going to suffer sometimes. The work you do is going to be miscounted. The deed you do for some people is going to mean no good to them. But thank God you know what you're doing and do it until God come. I don't 
don't know about you, but I'm going to do the perfect will of God. I'm going to work uh, while, the day, uh, is, uh, while the day is still shining. I'm going to work until my life uh, is done. I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to keep serving God in season and out of season. And he will not let me stumble. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. But in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge God. And I know he will direct my path. Somebody ought to ask the Lord, direct my path. I don't know which way to go. I'm going all around. But if you direct my path, sometime he got to lead you. You can't lead yourself. The songwriter said, where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him always. I'm going to go all the way, and I'm going to stay there. The church needs transformed men and women whose mind is already made up, whose heart is fixed, and on their way to heaven, enjoying the trip. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 said, Though we walk in the flesh, oh, we do not war after the flesh. Yes, we are in the flesh, but nothing's going to take over this body that's going to condemn me when I stand before God. My hands got to be made right. My feet got to be made right. My hearing got to be made right. What I say got to be made right. My tongue got to be tamed because if I don't watch it, this little member of this body is going to say some things that I wish I had closed my mouth. But thank beyond the God, the Holy Ghost keep me calm. And when I want to rise, he said, be still and know that I'm God. For the weapon, Paul said, for the weapon of our warfare. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down. Somebody just reach out. Somebody need to pull down the most strongholds. You got to pull down. There's some strongholds that holding some people down. And you want to do something, but something got you holding down. And you can't move like you want to lose. But I heard Jesus say when Lazarus was wrapped up, tied up, he said, loose him and let him go. Look at somebody and say, I got to be loose. I got to be loose. I, I can't be tied up uh, and wrapped up. When we have been transformed, I'm about to finish. Then no weapon, no weapon, no weapon. I love that. No weapon. <laughs> Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. But no weapon uh, that you form against me shall prosper. You know. You know, some of the weapons of, of Satan is argument. Uh, if Satan can get you arguing uh, over nothing, uh, he got you. But I come to tell you today, uh, I got a weapon, uh, and it's not Connor. Uh, I got a weapon, uh, and it can pull down the strongholds. Uh, the weapon I have uh, is not conformed to this world, uh, but been transformed uh, through the power of Jesus Christ because I'm a living uh, Vessel for the Lord. The perfect, the perfect, the perfect will of God. I'm almost finished. As I close, as I close, Jesus did the perfect will for his Father. Jesus said, I come to do my Father's will. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Not my will, but let Thy will be done on Calvary. He proved that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He was nailed. Don't you know he could have called a legion of angels? I mean, thousand, thousand. But he didn't need it. They nailed him to the cross. Nailed his hand. For you, for me, and you mean to say we treat Jesus? Like we are treated, we won't even say thank you. Won't even say amen. The pastor have to say, can I get an amen? Can I get a hand show? 
would you put your hands together? Well, if the trees, if the trees, the Bible tells, teaches us that the trees even got happy and clapped their hands. If the stars in the sky can clap their hands, if mountains can move out of places, I believe today we as a people should give God some praise. Put your hands together and tell God thank you Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I, I thank you, Lord. The perfect will of God. From the sixth to the ninth hour, for you and me, he did this on the cross. I said from the sixth to the ninth hour, he did this for you and I. He stayed there wouldn't come down one so brave to look at him and say why don't you come down from the cross and save us and then save yourself save yourself and save us but he wouldn't come down why because he had a duty to do God has a duty for us our duty is to worship and give God praise and encourage one another, not discourage, but encourage one another that don't give up. Though you're on drugs, we're going to pray you through. Though you're on alcohol, we're going to pray you through. Though you have some sleepless nights, we're going to pray you through. Oh, we got to call a fast, but we're going to pray you through. And we're going to touch and agree, and we're going to pray you through. But you're all on the cross. It was very to all of us and we're going to pray until we see something happen. Oh, I'm glad that he gave us the perfect will. How did he give us the perfect will? The Bible said after in the grave for three days and three nights. I don't know what time it was, but the Bible said early, early in the morning. Oh, the Bible said he got up out of the grave. The Bible said he didn't when you have been resurrected, there's no way you can sit down in that seat all the time. You've got to stand up. The Bible said that we shall suffer out of the grave and declare all power. Is the church is in his head? Somebody asked me, who is it? I said, he's Jesus. from the love of God because he live I shall go I will go to see what the end gonna be say yeah say yeah throw your hands up and thank God tell him thank you tell him thank you The perfect, the perfect, the perfect will. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of thy mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the perfect will of God for his people. Stand on your feet. The Lord bless you. May the heavens continue to smile upon you. If it's not inconvenient, stand on your feet. We extend to you the greatest invitation that I know about, an invitation to come to Christ. One writer said, just as you are, without one plea, but that his blood was shed for me. If you're here today, 
as a candidate for baptism on your Christian experience, this is a good day to be saved. If you come today and you need to be baptized on this Wednesday night, we will go in the liquor stream and baptize you. Maybe you've been out and looking for church home. I, I ask you to come this way. Let us go to heaven together. Maybe if you stray it away and just want to be united back into the fold, come on in. Are you here today? As a candidate for baptism on your Christian experience, a letter. White road. Oh, red. I want to be ready, church. I want to be ready. Man, woman, boy, or girl, will you come? Will you come? Yeah, yeah. If not, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to be ready to try on.